Hi. Buying and reading comic books can be an expensive hobby, particularly if you don't have a lot of spare cash. Uh, you can get digital editions which save money on having hard copies, but however this again can still be expensive if the comic you want isn't on sale. Now, a lot of people don't realise that there is a massive library of premium comic books available essentially for free as part of your Amazon Prime subscription. Um, you don't have to get Kindle Unlimited, um, they're covered under something called Prime Reading, which means you can take out a certain number of books from the Amazon Prime library and read them on either your PC or a Kindle-enabled device such as a tablet. Uh, this allows you to either read comic books that you didn't really want to spend the money on reading or just didn't have the money to buy or look at in any other format and then you might find that you enjoy the comic book so much or you like the artwork that you want to buy it in sort of a printed format. What I've done is I had a look through the Amazon Prime Reading Library for comic books and graphic novels and I've picked out 10 of I think the best starting points or best picks for it. This is a constantly revolving library, so it's always having items changed in and out depending on things that are on at the cinema or what the current trends in media might be. So at the moment there's a lot of Star Wars books in there. When the Avengers film was out there were a lot of Avengers books in there. Um, so I imagine when the Bloodshot film, which is the next comic book release coming out, um, is there, there will be a lot of Valiant stuff on there. But they cover all the major places. You've got Image, you've got Marvel, you've got DC, and you've got Valiant. So there'll always be a mix for something um, in there. Now, let's begin. These are in no particular order, by the way. Uh, the first one was a Batman book. Um, there's a couple of Batman titles in there. Um, and I, this was a toss-up between this one and Court of Owls. But I chose Batman Year One. Basically, it's one of the most well regarded at Batman stories. It's a great jumping on point if you've never read a Batman book before. It's essentially his origin. Um, definitely worth checking out. It's got very unique art style and if you like it there's also a I think very good uh, animated movie that goes along with it. But every now and then is available again via Amazon uh, Prime on the video side of things on their app. Um, it's not available at the moment, but it's one of the ones you keep your eye open for. Okay, next up is a bit of a cheat. Um, I've chosen Planet Hulk and World War Hulk. Both books are on there and available, and I know they're two separate books, but it's essentially one long saga. The first is the sort of gladiator story, but told with Hulk. He's been thrown off the earth by the Illuminati, and instead of going to a peaceful planet, he ends up on... Sakaar where he is made to be a gladiator much like the story gladiator and he creates an uprising against the king there the emperor um, and frees all the slaves and then he comes back to earth with a chip on his shoulder which is when he basically fights everyone in the Marvel Universe in Planet Hulk and kicks their asses. Um, if you've seen Thor Ragnarok and you want to know where the inspiration for Hulk being uh, the Gladiator comes from. This is one to read. Um, next one is Lock and Key, Volume 1. Obviously Lock and Key is currently showing on Netflix, so uh, if you want to know where the inspiration for that TV series came from and how accurate it is to the books, uh, this is a good starting point. The Lock and Key comics are always really expensive, uh, either digitally or uh, to purchase um, in printed format. Uh, they never seem to go down in price that much. Even when they're on sale digitally, they're still like £5, £4 a book, which I think is quite a lot for a digital comic, particularly if you don't get a, a PDF backup of it. Um, use this to check it out and see if you uh, agree that there's something to have a big fuss about, and that this is sort of a well-regarded seminal comic book series. Next one is one of the many Star Wars books that is on there. Um, it was difficult to try and choose a Star Wars book, but I went with Darth Vader, Dark Lord of the Sith. This is essentially two volumes from the latest Darth Vader run from Marvel, condensed into one book. Um, it's more of an action-orientated comic. It 
shows some cool stuff to do with the background of the Sith. Shows how they get, well, it retells and reimagines how they get their red lightsabers, which is quite cool. They don't use synthetic crystals as the old Star Wars literature used to um, say. They actually get a kyber crystal from a Jedi's lightsaber and they corrupt it. And as the Emperor says, you make it bleed and then it goes red. This has Darth Vader fighting a solitary um, Jedi who like has to exile himself because of he, he was trying to pay penance for something. And you get to see a bit more of the character and the lore that is apparently now canon. Um, until they tell you it isn't. <laughs> um, but if you like this, then there are other volumes on there. You've got all the modern Star Wars books on there. The, the proper full Star Wars run between um, A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. Uh, you've got the original Darth Vader run. Well... <laughs> original the, the the volume of that came before this the Kieran Gillen one um, and you've also got Dr Afra, which was a very popular run about a rogue archaeologist in the Star Wars universe who gets mixed up with Darth Vader also there are all of the omnibuses um, pretty much for the Star Wars legends as they're now known so if you want to look back at the old comic book they are all on there and there are thousands of pages of Star Wars stories to read on there um, next up is a Marvel book again, it's Spider-Man Blue. Uh, this is a retelling of Spider-Man and Gwen Stacy. Um, it's got Tim Sale drawing it and it's by Jeff Loeb. It's very highly regarded again. It's a great standalone book to read if you're a Spider-Man fan. Uh, I get fed up with all of the Marvel continuity in the modern books. So this is the kind of book I like because you can read it, You've got a contained story and you've put it down and it's not too long and you don't need to know loads and loads of lore. If you know your Spider-Man, uh, then this is even more enriched. But if you don't, then it's a great book to just have a read of um, just to get your head into the game. Um, next up is a DC book. Again, another standalone book. This is Kingdom Come. Um, this tells a story of what happens when the first generation of heroes, sort of your Superman, your Batman and that, get old uh, and their kids take over as superheroes. Or well, I say that the next generation takes over as superheroes and they're obsessed with image and not the same values that, that the predecessors had. Um, it's, a, it, it's a deep story and I'm not gonna cover it all here in this quick summary, but it's got great art by Alex Ross. Um, some people really don't like his art because they find it, because it's all painted, they find it a little bit too much hard work, but I think the majority of people enjoy it. But again, because you're reading it for free, you don't have to worry if you don't like it because you've um, not paid anything other than your standard Prime subscription anyway. Uh, but, but check it out if you want to. It's, it's a good story and it's one a lot of people always refer and comment on and you'll see if you watch the um, DC TV series um, where the Infinite Crisis, the Brandon Ruth Superman is somewhat based on the Superman from this so you'll be able to sit there with a little bit of extra knowledge on it. Um, the next one is a book that you will never see made into a TV series but, or movie, it's The Irredeemable Am Man. This is a story about a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent who doesn't give a toss. Um, and he steals an experimental Ant-Man suit from Hank Pym and he goes and uses it for all the naughty things that you would use something for if you could get small and essentially be invisible. He goes and spies on women in the shower, he uses it to get money um, and he's just a naughty boy. <laughs> um, it's really worth reading if you want a laugh, it's by Robert Kirkman and you can tell he just, he just sat there and thought what can I get away with if I was a man who could change size and it just um, it's suddenly enjoyable but I can't ever see someone at Disney signing off making a Marvel film about this because they'd either soften it so much that it wasn't any fun or they would miss out so many good bits and this volume ends with him picking some hot woman out of the crowd to go and perv on in the shower and the last I think, I think the last um, panel is him realising that he's just jumped into the handbag of Carol Danvers, Miss Marvel and he's not disappointed in the second volume when he gets to a watcher in the shower as well. <laughs> um, 
Uh, next one is a science fiction book, I like the science fiction, uh, and that's Letter 44, Volume 1 by Charles Saul. This is a story about a president taking over um, when he starts his new term and he gets a letter from the former president, this letter 44, where they sort of tell him bits of information and say good luck. He finds out that there is alien spacecrafts um, out in the solar system, there's a mission being sent out there to try and uh, communicate, identify with them, but in the meantime on Earth there are big changes going on because scientists have been enlisted to try and obviously counteract any attack that might occur or anything that might bad that might happen so they're creating weapons and things and it's how he manages that situation. Um, it's split between the story of the people in space and the president on the earth and it's really worth checking out. I've got a review on the full series um, on my channel. Um, next one is another cheat. This is essentially two series of books but they're both in what I call the Archie Comics Horrorverse. Um, this is where you take the Archie comics characters who are also clean cut and apple pie and you put them into horror based stories. Um, you've got both first volumes of both of these series, um, Archie, oh, sorry, Afterlife with Archie I should say, and Jughead the Hunger. The former is when uh, Riverdale gets taken over by zombies and the Archie gang uh, have to try and fight the zombies and escape and not everyone makes it out alive. The next story is Jughead the Hunger. Um, this is where Jughead becomes a werewolf and uh, other people in the town also get turned into werewolves and Jughead has to uh, you know, sort that problem out. I don't want to say too much because uh, it's one of those books where you read it and then you find that you've got to try and guess who's either going to be a werewolf or who's going to die and how they're going to react with it and it's, it's quite enjoyable. Um, but again, because you're not paying anything, um, you don't have to worry about it. But it's it's an enjoyable read and it's something that you might not otherwise want to spend your money on. Um, finally, this is one from Image and it's Lumberjanes Volume 1. Uh, Lumberjanes is a story about a group of sort of girl scouts who go off to a camp uh, for the summer but there's strange things going on in the woods. It initially looks like a very very childish book but it's not. It's got lots of themes of friendship, uh, sexuality and adventure and it's got numerous awards and it's gone on for numerous volumes um, for a reason because people enjoy it, um, it's got good art, it's got good storytelling and once you get into the story it takes a while because there's so many mystery elements and things have to start slotting into place um, it's incredibly enjoyable and it's the kind of book that is always on sale or you might find it on Humble Bundle where you get a load of volumes digitally um, you know for really good value but if you want to read the first volume for free then this is a good starting point to see if you sort of like the flavour of the book. There are loads of other comics that are of exceptional quality on there, are loads of other picks that I could have made and didn't. Um, we've got Ameri things like American Vampire on there um, amongst others but obviously I just wanted to try and keep the list as concise as possible because once you're in there and you're flicking through you can make your own mind up um, with it. Um, so look, those are my sort of initial picks for Prime reading um, that if you've got a Prime subscription you can access for free. You can also access as part of that because Amazon owns Comixology all of the Comixology originals as well. I haven't read a lot of their stories so I've only really read Savage Game but they seem to be of a high quality as well and they've got good good writers and illustrators on there and I tend when I'm on holiday to read a lot of those so I can take them away on my iPad to look at or read on the plane. Um, so yeah, if you've got any other picks on there um, please let me know in the comments below um, and thanks for watching and please feel free to like and subscribe.